everyone. Thanks so much for staying with us here at CBS News. I'm Lana Zach. And I'm Ed O'Keefe. Another historic day in the making. That's right. We are just a few hours away from former President Donald Trump appearing in federal court now for a second time. It is the first time that the former president will face a judge in connection to the special counsel's investigation into the January 6th riots and his alleged attempts to overturn the 2020 election results. Trump is facing four criminal counts in connection to the probe. Here's a live look at the courthouse in Washington. It's within earshot of the United States Capitol, where prosecutors say the president's actions led to the insurrection. CBS Evening News anchor and managing editor Nora O'Donnell joins us now from D.C. Nora, good to see you. This, of course, is former President Trump's third indictment this year. But help us contextualize for those joining us. Why does this one stand out and is so different from the other two so far? Well, just extraordinary to think that former President Donald Trump on his way here to Washington, D.C. You can see his plane, his 757 emblazoned with Trump on the, the side there. It will land here in Washington shortly, and then he will make his way to the federal courthouse right here in D.C., which is not far from the U.S. Capitol. And, of course, much of this indictment centers on the January 6th attacks and the effort by the president of the United States and his co-conspirators to try and overturn the election results in 2020. I think this one is different, to answer your question, Ed, is because this is the first time in history that a commander-in-chief, a former commander-in-chief, is accused of, one, conspiring to defraud the United States, two, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, three, conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. All of it outlined in this 45-page indictment. And you don't have to listen to me. You can read this, because it's quite clear, even for a legal document, it's pretty easy to understand the charges. And I guess one of the things that's noteworthy as you get through this is how many times Mike Pence and the Office of the Vice Presidency is mentioned. Over 100 times. What does that mean? Well, it means that Pence was taking contemporaneous notes all throughout this uh, special period of time in which Donald Trump was essentially asking him to try and overturn the election, to not certify the votes on January 6th, including just two remarkable phone calls in particular that I want to point out. Christmas Day, Mike Pence calls the president uh, to wish him uh, Merry Christmas, and Trump says, you need, you know, starts pressuring him, you know, you need to overturn uh, the results on January 6th. And Pence replies, you know, I don't think I have the authority to change the outcome. Then there's a call on New Year's Day in which Trump again is said to berate his former vice president. And Pence responds, well, look, look, there's no constitutional basis for me to try and overturn the election in which Trump replies, you're too honest. It's a pretty mm. remarkable transformation for those of us like you, Ed, too, who have covered this vice president who was most loyal and now appears to have turned over most of his notes to the special counsel, Jack Smith, that make up a great deal of this indictment. Yeah. Um, and we just saw that former President Trump aboarding his, his jet there that is set to take off from Newark Liberty International for yeah. what they say will be about an hour, 90 minute flight down to uh, down to Washington. And in many ways, we have seen this play out uh, two times previously uh, in New York and in Florida. But this one, Nora, is happening there where you are, in our nation's capital. How significant is it that it, the arraignment is happening just a stone's throw from where all of this took place, from the Capitol, from the grounds where the former president gave that speech that the, that the special counsel alleges incited the violence that, that followed? Well, critically important. I mean, think about this. This is not just the seat of power, our nation's capital, but is also looked upon as the world um, and the U.S. capital as a symbol of democracy. That's why so many people want to come here to America and immigrate to this country. We have a system like nobody else does, which does include freedom of speech, which does include the freedom of the press, among all of the other uh, rights that are outlined in the Constitution. And that was nearly assaulted on January 6th. The very 
last step. And yet it's we were able to, those Capitol Police officers and others, and then the lawmakers who stayed late into the night in order to certify those election results to make sure there is a peaceful transfer of power. So the fact that Trump is coming here um, to face uh, this arraignment in person here in our nation's capital and then could ultimately be tried here, although his attorneys are trying to get uh, a trial somewhere else, the fact that he will be tried here is significant. One of the things I learned today uh, in researching uh, and preparing for today is that of the 1,000 defendants who have gone before juries here in Washington, D.C., all of them have been convicted. So that's quite a record for the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice has been very busy for the past several years trying to bring justice to those individuals who defiled the U.S. Capitol, who tried to hurt uh, uh, law enforcement members, even lawmakers, in an effort to do what Donald Trump had asked them to do, which is delay or stop the certification of results. Many of those uh, individuals are now in jail uh, and have faced significant punishment by the Justice Department. And now the commander-in-chief, who the special counsel uh, alleges uh, fueled these lies that many of those January 6th defendants were prosecuted for, will face his own time before this ju magistrate judge today and then later a trial by jury. And we should uh, point out that his attorney, John Laura, told us yesterday on CBS Mornings that they're likely going to—and you alluded to this—make the motion to try to get this move to West Virginia, right. where they argue politically, at least, they may find a more favorable jury pool. But as our Scott McFarland reminded us earlier today, there have been several motions by these defendants to move their trials out of Washington, and all of them have been rejected, making the argument that the crime occurred in Washington. You get tried in the place where the crime was committed, allegedly. Therefore, it's unlikely that even if they make the move to, to move it, that, that it would ever be yeah. granted by a judge. Um, it it's, it's one of the reasons um, I became a political reporter here in Washington and why we anchor this broadcast from here in Washington, D.C., is because not only did we witness two impeachments of this president and then what happened on January 6th, we're now going to have what is going to be one of the most extraordinary moments in American history, which is a trial of a former president right here in our nation's capital. Today, marks the beginning of that. So, Nora, when you pick up coverage in a little bit, then what should we anticipate uh, through the afternoon? Well, we'll have new reporting um, starting. We're going to start coverage, of course, when the president uh, arrives here in our nation's capital and starts to make his way down to that federal courthouse close to uh, the U.S. Capitol. We'll be joined uh, by Robert Costa, who has new reporting, Nancy Cordes, Major Garrett is outside the courthouse there. Uh, you mentioned Scott McFarlane. You know, he likes to get inside and listen, <laughs> and he'll call us by phone or however he can to give us all the details. And, of course, our incredible team of electrons experts and lawyers to break all this down about what we are seeing here today. So an extraordinary moment and a team of uh, the best reporters and correspondents in the business here at CBS News. In a case fundamentally about American democracy. Nora O'Donnell, thank you. Thank you, Laura.